Uh, good morning, everyone. This is uh, my buddy Phil Castile and myself, Mike uh, Yuzina, here in uh, damp, nasty St. Augustine, Florida. We are Menorcan Magic Handmade Cast Net folks. And what I thought today, I'll do a couple of, couple of things. I haven't really, and this stuff is what works for me. So don't take this as gospel of what you have to do if you're going to, when, you know, when you're making your net. I'm going to show you the way uh, my ancestors have been doing this for since uh, in St. Augustine since uh, 1777. So, with that said, uh, I'm going to show you the uh, a uh, what I call a bridle. It is your hand line, your swivel, and I call them tucks, and now they call them brails, braille lines. Anyway, and what I use, and what I, my ancestors have been using, uh, you know, I know, well, I've been doing this since the uh, uh, late 40s, so anyhow, and that is a cow horn. Now, cow horns used to be plentiful, you know, back in the day, but they kind of, the, the slaughterhouse that was in St. Augustine closed up many years ago, so that, that went to cow horn, so you had to go to uh, other sources. I've been I've been finding mine on eBay, but and they're not cheap. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna show you basically uh, what I use. This is the last batch, and uh, that is a cow horn. <laughs> believe it or not, and it's different sizes. Now you don't want to get you don't want to get no great old big horn because it gets too big, and the, and the bigger the horn, the farther it is solid there at this tip. That's that's the issue. So. Uh, now, what I've done, uh, normally this bridle is going on the little five foot shrimp net that I just finished. And uh, normally I put uh, the number of braille lines based on uh, the size of the net. A uh, little four and five foot net, I just put one at every one, so that's 14. Uh, and usually I put uh, the hand line based on the size of the net. Uh, this one, I think this one's about, I don't know, it's about 15 or 18 feet, which is plenty on a little five-foot bait net. Now, uh, let me show you something, how I do this. Uh, I use a three-eighths hand line, which is soft on your hands, a, 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 a hollow braid. This is a, a, a good quality, quality uh, poly. It doesn't tangle. You you wouldn't want to use nylon or, or cotton on, on these nests because they tangle something terrible. This does not tangle real bad. Anyway, all right, you can see what I did. I take and I drill a hole. Now, when I drill a hole through this thing, as you can see them right in the center. Can you see that, Phil? Yep. Okay, I drill a hole right through the center. Now. Three eighths, you want to go to a five sixteenths drill bit. You don't want to use a quarter inch because it's it's too tight. Now, so I use a, a, a five sixteenths drill bit, and I drill a hole through it, and you got to deburr it really good. And when I slide this through it, I take and I tie a knot, as you can see. I tie it knot, and I leave about oh, I'd say a, a good three eighths of an inch sticking out, and I pull that thing good and tight. When I get it. When I get that thing, I'll take and pull that thing because you want to keep that thing really good and tight for a while. You want that night tight, uh, not tight. And then when you take it off, you're gonna you want to keep this thing slid up tight. And I'm gonna leave about three eighths of an inch at least between that and a half inch. And I'm gonna I'm gonna burn it. I'm gonna catch it a fire, and it's gonna start melting. It melts. It physically melts. And I take a a regular paper towel. Uh, you know the roll tiles you use in the kitchen, and I, you want to double it over because this you don't want to get burnt with this stuff. And when it gets down, <clears throat> when that flame and that molding poly gets right down to the start of that knot, is when you want to take and you want to take that uh, paper towel and right away you want to fold it over and push it into it. You're gonna you're gonna uh, force that molding poly into that knot. As you can see, can you can you see how that came out, Phil? Are you getting a hold it right a, there. A good picture of that. You can see what I did. 
how f that's flush across there. Yep. That molding poly is in that knot. That's hell bent for style. You ain't gonna never untie that. I mean that thing is. is and, and then I take my my uh, nail polish and I I do a little coating on it to you know to kind of smooth it in. Yeah. Tell them not to touch it because it'll burn their hand. Yeah. Yeah. Be careful. This stuff will burn you. So you want to make sure. Now what this does? See this swivels. Now. Uh, over time, from casting your net, it twirls, and these these tucks will twist. They'll just twist on you. And so, what you do, you just, every now and then, you just reach up here and you you, un, you know whichever way you need to go, and you untie it. Now, enough with the hand. Now, now on the other end, on the other end, what I did is there's a little tool. I don't have one handy. Your little tool that you slide the end of this into it and it slides up into this. The fid. And so, so you can see what I did. I put, get uh, enough in there where it's going to stay. Now you have to tie this because it'll pull out on you. So what I do is I take and wrap this as you can see. That's wrapped good and tight with uh, with the Dacron. And, and uh, then when I get it, I, I go so far one way with one end, so far the other way. You can see what I've got there. And when I get when I get it down where I want it, I'll just take it and take my uh, scissors and I'll cut it off, leave about a uh, eighth of an inch or so sticking up, and I'll take a small match and burn it. And I'll, I'll catch it a fire and I'll, I'll be cautious. Remember I've told you before, Decron is super flammable. It will burn quick. So you want to get it going and it'll real fast, it's gonna burn right down flush and that's what you want to take my finger and I just smear it right into that knot. I do both sides that same way, both ends. And anyway, then this is coated with my nail polish. There ain't no way that's ever gonna come loose. And you can do this based on your wrist. You know, some people do this stuff, you know, I mean, I've, told, I've warned you about doing it that way, but you do what you want, sure, your stuff. But anyway, all right, with that said now, the actual braille lines. All right, that net's five foot. So what I do, I, I, uh, if I'm gonna have 14 tucks, I'm gonna cut seven uh, pieces of, uh, of uh, this is bonded nylon, number 15, bonded nylon, and I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut seven pieces, five foot plus another two foot, so I'm gonna cut these things 12 foot long because you want you want a good sized piece when you go to tie these things onto that uh, lead line. You want you you know you want something in your hand to be able to pull it tight because you're gonna do a series of half hitches. We've we've gone over that, and you're gonna you want to be able to pull it real tight. Then when you get down to the to the to the foot line again, you're gonna leave uh, a bit and you're gonna cut it off. Then you're gonna really be careful. When you burn that off, I'm gonna tell you, you make sure that you take that thing in your hand like this and make sure that lead, that lead line's sticking out away from that net. And you want to smear it into that into them half hitches. Okay. Then I just simply took half on one side, half on the other, and I did the same thing here. See how I wrapped that? Are you picking that up, Phil? This oh, is yeah, wrapped the same way. I do a series of half hitches. The same process as I did, you know, on the hand line. Uh, and basically what I have now, I have my bridle. And with that, I just take the two for temporarily and put a little knot in it. Because this is going to slide down through the horn. Now let's get back to the horn. The horn, <coughs> this horn is going in the top of that net. Now I'm going to show you the difference. Uh, this is a shrimp net horn. That's a mullet net horn. Phil's going to show you the, the difference, the close-up on the diameter of the hole in those horns. You got that, Phil? Yep. Now, when you throw a net over shrimp, they come to the top. You definitely wouldn't want to use a horn with a hole that big because they're going to come right through it. They will, they'll, when, they, when, they, when they shoot up to the top, bam. You won't see what you're losing when, while you're pulling that net in, but you're going to lose shrimp. You don't want to use a big horn. Some of your commercial things, they've got dividers in them where they can't get out anyhow. I'm just telling you this stuff. If you opt to do this stuff the way that the way I do it, then, you know, you, you cut the horn. You can see what I did. 
you saw the swivel. There's the horn. Now, this is a mullet net. Uh, there's the horn, and this this is going to be the swivel. These are not, and you can see, I probably, when I cut that horn, I, uh, I, I, that, that's a good half inch or more. And when you drill your hole, you want to drill it right in the middle. You're going to have to hold this with a pair of channel on pliers when you drill that, by the way. You don't try to hold it in your hand. And uh, when you drill it, then you got to deburr it really good, and you want to really polish this thing. Same thing here. And then, as you can see, I take a flat tail, I, I take a magic marker, and I go around and I put an even mark all the way around this thing. And I take a flat tail file, a flat file, where I get flat tail from? Correct me, Phil. Yeah. I get a flat file, turn up on the edge, and, and, and I hold this thing tied to my hand, and and here I go. I'm following that. I'm following that mark. I put a hard to see on black, but I can't help that. So I use a red marker. You can see a little better. And I, I, I cut this groove in it. I don't know. Can you get a close up of that of that view of that? You hold groove? the. You hold the steady. You see what I did there? Okay. Okay. Now this is going to go in the top of that net, and that top of that net is going to secure around it. And this is what you're going to see, and then when you put the, when you finish an inch, you put this in it, and uh, you're ready to secure them to the uh, uh, net. There's the mullet net, much bigger, bigger horn. On one of these, uh, these things are expensive. I, I think I paid, uh, if I ain't mistaken, I bought... Uh, I think I paid sixty-eight dollars for four. The last time I bought them, I bought thirty-two. I won't have them for a while because I do use a lot of this stuff. Out of a cow horn this size, it's probably ten inches. I can, and if I'm lucky, I'm, I'm gonna be able to start using it down about maybe two to three inches. When I cut it off, I'm gonna, my hole's gonna start, <clears throat> which is gonna look like this. Uh, the small hole for the shrimp net, the large, the larger. I can usually get a, a shrimp net and, and at least one mullet net plus the swivels. And sometimes some of these things, if they're a little bit longer, I can get, you know, maybe two two mullet net horns out of it. Hopefully, as you can see, the further it comes in toward the the cow, the thinner it got. So you to limit how far you could go and plus the size. All right, I've babbled on enough about that. I think I got you pretty well covered. If you've got any questions, uh, my email address, best to catch me at uh, usinamike at gmail.com. The phone number is 904-217-7974. I hear from some real interesting folks. Now, last thing I want to show you today, uh, my buddy G, G.D. Powell, he had a question for me, and I think I fluffed him off. I don't think I really, I didn't really answer it other than the fact that it wasn't any big deal about your widenings. Uh, when you put widenings, uh, they have a tendency, if you're not careful, they have a tendency when you tie that knot, for that knot to ride up on top of that board. Can you see where I'm pointing there, Phil? You, it has a, you'll have a tendency... For that knot Hold the steady. To, to tie up on top of here. And what happens is this thing over time will get out of shape. It'll start getting out of shape on you. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. But I'm going to show you uh, a way I figured this out some time ago, uh, a long time ago, on how to make this work a lot easier. So I'm going to tie one. Phil, you're going to have to get a good close-up of this. Okay. You're gonna to have to get a close up. Just there. hold steady. Yeah, I'm two I'm two mashes away from a widening. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and tie those. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna tie those two two meshes. Alright, I'm ready for a widening. Now we know that we put that where the widening goes. You wanna keep them right in line with the one above it, all the way up that net. Remember we talked about that. We start, they're going to be three apart, then four apart, five, six, seven, and so on. They're, this net is just over three feet, and they're, they're 13 meshes apart. 
Okay. Now I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna run my needle in between like like you do. Now important here is you don't want to pull it too tight and you don't want it you don't want it baggy. You want just snug and you pull it and then you want to crimp that thumb right up close to the leading edge. Are you able to see that? Is that short? Yes. Huh? Yes. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna thumb a circle. And I'm gonna come in here. Twice, because you want you get a double tie your widens. However you do it, you can tie a single knot and come right back and tie another knot on. However you want to do it. Now, Trey, what I'm going to see how this board is is horizontal. To tie this knot, I'm gonna come up vertical. See what I'm doing? You got that, Phil? Yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna tie that thing right up on the leading edge of that board. Now, if it if it gets up too high on you, you can just take take the end of your needle and pull it back down, you want it right to the leading edge of that board. Now what that does, when I start knitting again, see that thing lays there pretty and uh, right up against that. If I do this again, I got I got <laughs> I got to show you one more time, but I'm going to have to go ahead and knit 13 meshes to get to it, to the next one. But I'd like to do just one more, because I want you to make sure you understand what I did. And uh, I don't want to go buy that damn thing. I hate I'm going by a, a wide and have to stop and go back and untie a knot or two. Especially with this stuff. The white was easy to untie. White is e is easy to untie as nylon. Uh, this is, uh, this this here is a, what do you call it, Phil? What do we call this? Chartreuse? Chartreuse. Yeah, this is chartreuse, which is... They call it yellow sometimes? Yellow green. I, I, I don't know. I had a parakeet one time that was chartreuse. <laughs> Pretty burnt. I ended up having to give it away because it made a mess and my mother didn't like the mess, so I had to give my parakeet away. All right, one more. One more. We're gonna, I'm going to show you this one last time. I'm going to wrap this program up. All right, I'm ready for the widening. Here we are. You can see where it goes. Hold on. Got that? Can you see it? Too? I'm coming in. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to run the needle right underneath it. And I'm going to come on down. Just and leave my, enough space there. And I'm going to throw that double. I'm going to come through there twice because I want a double knot. And my board now is, is horizontal. I'm going to just turn it up. Turn it up like this so I can tie that knot right up on the leading edge of that board. It stays right in the middle when you do it that way. If you if you do this straight, it has a tendency that knot to settle up on top of that board. And what that, you know, it, it, over time it adds up. But, uh, but any, anyway, ah, oh, you silly thing. Can't, I hate that when it comes off your finger because, you, you know, Better off when that happens, don't try to do what I'm doing. Untie it. You know, because if you're not really proficient at this, you're going to end up with a mess. All right, I think that pretty well covers this. I hope it's a, it's a help to you. And uh, I do want to wish, did I say this before, Phil? I hope everybody has a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. For goodness sake, enjoy your your. Uh, your your uh, family and, and friends during the Christmas and uh, take care of yourself. Don't eat too much. I ate too much at Thanksgiving. I had an upset stomach for two, three days. I ate like a man. I tell you, <laughs> I was talking to a young lady somewhere. Oh, at, at my doctor's office. She wanted to know how I did for Thanksgiving. I said, I eat too much. And <laughs> uh, we was comparing our stomach <laughs> ailments. Anyway. With all of that said, for goodness sake, if you have any questions or any concerns, any comments, don't hesitate to, to let us know. I hope I covered that. You got enough information to you, I think. Uh, so with that said, Phil, you got anything? You wanna... I would go over the braille lines. For a five foot, you use how many braille lines? Oh, the braille lines on a on five, okay. Yeah, let me, I can clarify that a little bit better. 
thank you because I meant to do that and I, I didn't. Okay, on that little four and five foot net, I used 14. I did say that. All right. I used 14 because, you know, the sinkers, are, your sinkers are close together. And uh, when, when I go to a, a six foot net, I'm going to increase it probably to 16. Seven foot, I'm going to go to 18. Eight foot, I'm going to go to go to 20 at least. And uh, uh, then I made a 10 foot net. This net's going to to my buddy Phil Harbor and 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 uh, uh, Cape Cod. If you want to look up, he's he's got a web. He's got the two largest. Uh, Bait and tackle shops in the northeast. They're in they're in uh, Goose Hammock, uh, Maine, Mass, Mass, Cape Cod. Anyway, uh, I made him a. This net's going to him. This would be I think about the fifth net. <laughs> He's got a place down down south down in Stewart. But anyway, also, so this net's going to him. And anyway, I made him an net and I put 40 braille lines in it because he was going to use it in the ocean. not going to ever hit the bottom. A pogies, man hater on top of the water. You throw the net on, you got to tuck it right away. And so he, uh, I put 40 braille lines in. Normally, normally on a 10 foot net, you know, I might put 30 because, you know, you got your circumference is, is bigger. Uh, and your sinkers are further apart, and you know you want enough braille lines in it, tuck that thing for you. So what did I say? 14 uh, on the five foot. Uh, when we get to six foot, we go to 16. Seven foot, we go to 18. Eight foot, you know, we're going to go to 20, 22, something like that. And I kind of, I make custom made nets, and some people have a preference. Right. So I'll, I'll just like the, the length of the hand line also, if I to tell you that, uh, I, you increase your hand line, a, a 10 foot net for instance, I'll put 40 foot of hand line on it. <clears throat> and, and I come down based on the, the size of the net. Uh, again, any questions, write me because I'm, ba I'm babbling on. Well, one thing you should mention is that for a 5 foot net, each braille line is cut 12 feet because it's going to be doubled over. You get two. You get two. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I showed them that. I showed them that. You can see what I did. Uh, just visualize Just visualize this. It's, it's, it's 14 and then half. You just go through your horn, go through your swivel, half on one side, half on the other, and you secure it. And make sure they're even, by the way. Make, make sure you hold them things even before you wrap this. Uh, you don't want to mess up because uh, uh, don't worry about it. you're going to waste some line, but don't worry about it. You're going to waste a little, end up wasting a little, uh, 14 little pieces about so long. Don't let that bother you, but you got to have enough in your hand to pull that nice and tight on that lead line. Anything else? I think we covered everything. Okay, thanks for the reminder because I have a tendency to. Forget? Is that a better word for it? Yeah. Oh, my God. Take care of yourself. Have a Merry Christmas. Bye out of here. Take care of yourself. Merry Christmas.